Welcome back to the dopest show you won't get sick of. I'm Spencer and this is Sasha. I spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the stupid stuff I did to get put in prison. I've also got a lot of stories about the crazy stuff that happened when I was actually in prison. And God forbid you end up in prison. You want to make some of the same mistakes I made. So before I get into this uh, Canadian jail war stories, he talks like he's one of those people off of Fargo. You know, uh, what are you doing there, eh? And uh, I'm, I'm going to talk with him a little bit later on. I'm going to get him to uh, leave a comment, and I'll link it. So if y'all want to watch me cutting up with him. When I go on other channels, you know, I cuss. I get a little bit crazier on my channel. I, I don't cuss much, if ever, on this one, on my secondary one I do. But, uh, yeah, it'd be fun cutting up with him. You know, I, there was a misunderstanding where a bunch of us kind of turned against him for a little bit. And, you know, I said he looked like Pepper off American Horror Story because it's one hairdo he had. It was a messed up hairdo. I still don't know what he was thinking. He said it was in a weird middle ground, and I believe that. But I feel bad for calling him Pepper. So, you know, he's a good dude, though. I mean, dude is a good guy. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm going to be on there later. So I'll, I'll pin the comment. Um, and anyway, so talking about popcorn, this is not popcorn Sutton, okay? I did a video speaking on popcorn on TikTok, and I had a... Thousand people. You did not know Captain Sutton. I didn't. You're right. It, it, how many? Okay. You know. Um. Let Let me think real quick. Okay. Um. I'm trying to. I, I'm a little behind on sleep, but I'm trying to think of a nickname. Okay. It's kind of like, you know, somebody gets called. Uh. I'm trying to think of a nickname. It, uh, some people get called certain nicknames, and it gets said more than once. There's a bunch of country old popcorns, just like there are a bunch of tinies, and tinies always a big old giant fat dude who usually drives a truck. And, you know, there are certain things in country slang that that comes from. So there's more than one popcorn. You think popcorn something thing was real name was popcorn? Come on. Get out of here with that. Um, but I figure I'll start, stop that before it starts because Lord have mercy. Did a story talking about my buddy Popcorn and all these people like, Popcorn Sutton? Some were excited and some were like, you did not know him. You're right. I didn't. So please skip that stuff. Uh, popcorn looked a lot like Popcorn Sutton, actually. Uh, I don't know if Popcorn Sutton had teeth. I can't remember that, but this Popcorn didn't have no teeth. And when he get real mad and angry, he'd make this face. And his lips, which he already didn't have any teeth, would like smash out. It, it, it'd be fun. It'd be a sight to see whenever he was angry. We we laugh because he made the funniest face you could imagine. Big old gray beard. But popcorn something. I believe he was short. This guy, uh, this guy was tall. He, he was over six foot tall. And he worked in maintenance, which is where I worked my first six months in the prison. Um. And, you know, during that time, I actually did work in maintenance my first six months. When I got back to low from the medium, I had a sign-in job, which basically you don't get paid, but you don't have to work in the kitchen. So it's a job that basically keeps you out of the kitchen. So that's what I did when I got back. My first six months, I actually was working in maintenance. And when I got back to the low security from the medium, he was still there, still working at maintenance. The only time you'd see me in maintenance was fried chicken day. Yep, my boss, he'd have to get me to sign something once a month, you know, my no-pay sheet. And he said, I'll know I'll see him on chicken day. That's the only day he goes to the kitchen. Yep, I ate commissary my last probably 18 months, two years. It, better for, you know, the lifting and stuff like that. Uh, what you eat can make you lift a lot more weight. I couldn't believe that, but God, I'm there with the nutritionist. But anyhow, popcorn back there had access to stuff. People in maintenance have access more than anyone in the prison to the whole prison they would literally forge a work order so they could get into whatever part they wanted sean pentard caribbean drug lord who took delivery of 500 kilos of blow every three months and a whole another bunch of tons of weed he worked in maintenance he's rich he only he still got seven restaurants and like a dozen cars he worked in maintenance so he could steal stuff from parts of the kitchen he couldn't get access to with the kitchen workers and he made the best seafood fritters. Good God almighty. He put a stinger in lard. I take dough. We had clams and oyster on the commissary, okay? Now, prison ain't a fun place, but Sean could make some food. And I have to say, I did eat some very incredible meals. Sean was a cook. He was a cook. And it's ironic because he looked like Gus off Breaking Bad. Bigger 
than a uh, or Miss Mister Fring, you know the dude who owned the chicken restaurants. Sean on, Sean on the chain of restaurants. But anyhow, it's ain't about Sean. I'll tell him another day. And people had different stuff they had access to. Popcorn got him some copper wire. And uh, you get that at the back of an ice machine that we broke. Copper wire, you have to make a coil. You have to make a snake. To make liquor, alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water. So it evaporates. But you have to cool it back down, turn it back into liquid so it just doesn't end up vapor stuck on the side of something. So basically, you don't have a temperature regulator though. See, I had something called a T500 that I made my liquor with. It held about five to six gallons of mash. And uh, be surprising, you don't need fruit to make wine. That's a, something a lot of people don't know. You need superized yeast, a um, couple of things that, and about... Uh, you know, I ate, but I used 12 pounds of sugar in about three days. You got 20% alcohol mixture ready to go. But in prison, we didn't have access to that, okay? So the wine, basically, it was made week by week. And now, typically, wine would take three to four weeks to turn into wine with the fruits, the sugars, and all that. And all that stuff that cutting a piece of bread at the middle, okay? I hate, I don't cuss a lot on here, but that's bullshit, okay? Anybody who says that doesn't know what they're talking about. Oh, it does the yeast. No, no, it, it does nothing. It's a waste of time. It doesn't do a thing, okay? So in order to make the wine week to week, to kick it, you save a 20-ounce bottle of that liquor, I mean, of that wine that's already had the process, had the fermentation process take place. And in the new batch of wine, you add all the stuff plus the 20 ounces of the already ready fermented wine. And that kicks it. It makes it ferment in a week because the bacteria is already in it. It speeds up the process into a week. Now, to make liquor is a whole different animal because you can burp. You know, typically the wine bags had like a little straw to vent them so they didn't blow up on somebody. Um, but if you make liquor, you have to have wine. You have to have a stinger. A stinger is something that's basically if you were to take a cord that plugs into the wall, um, and you were to cut like it off of a fan or something, a positive and a negative, two of the uh, pot handles with a little bit of rubber in between them. They can't be touching. And then you submerge it. Then you plug it in. I didn't know that when I first got there. I flipped the breaker oh, a bunch of times because I've had it plugged in. Then I dropped it in. And you can actually put your hand down in it with that live current as long as both as there's a complete current. You won't get electrocuted. But anyhow, you put that down in the wine. It bulls it. You got a cooler with the snake, with the ice, and that's how you cool it back down. Okay, now popcorn make this. You know he he he'd make some uh make some white lightning. Now the thing that's dangerous about prison wine, and his grimy self. Okay, you're supposed to throw off the first shot of alcohol when you make liquor. It has uh you know at the night or what is um. Uh, it has the stuff that's going to make you go blind. You hear about moonshine make you go blind. That's because of greedy people don't throw off the first couple of shot. I, whenever I made liquor, I threw off the first quart. Okay. Um, but anyhow, um, in at least a pint. Um, just paranoid. It's better safe than sorry. Um, people don't throw it out because that's money. Why throw it out? It's money. They don't care about your health. So... You know, I drank it one time in there, and yeah, my vision got white because it has those chemicals it ain't supposed to have in there. And yeah, he'd make it, and it had to be a cool guard. And see, he lived in Lee Hall, where my counselor threatened to send me all the time, as where the freaks were at, Lee Hall. Yeah, freaks come out at night, what, 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 yep, yeah, nope. Raymond, the whole bunch, they was in Lee Hall. Um, mm-mm, mm-mm, nope. Um, when I worked in maintenance for six months, I got to go in every building. Lee Hall's a fortress, a football field, long, three floors, and a basement. When they had the right guard working that was either lazy or didn't care, they would make this alcohol. See, it stinks terribly and has to be the right guard or they, you, you can't do it. There's no way to hide this smell, okay? And he'd make that liquor, and everybody's a big fan of popcorn's liquor. Now, you know, I heard a whole bunch of stories from him. He told stories of rip-offs and stuff down in country hollers where he'd box people in on a gravel road and stuff like that. And, you know, we sat, we BSed a good bit. But when I got back from the medium, he wasn't doing too well. Having problems breathing. 
And see, when they let everybody out to go to Peel Line in the evening, they let them out, that's at usually probably about, I'd say 6.30, 6.40, and everybody runs. Like, they run up there, the guards are like, no running on the compound, and people like quick walk. It looks like a bunch of kids trying to be the first one up there because you don't want to stay in a wait line. And you'd see Popcorn smiling with none of his teeth running by everybody. And I remember hearing the wheeze, and I'm like, man, you all right? He says, I'm not. He says, I've asked them to take me to the hospital multiple times, and um, they won't do it. He said, I don't think uh, I'm going to make it much longer. And I said, you're going to make it, man. Come on now. And, um, you know, it was messed up to hear him know that his end was, you know, coming. That there was nothing he could do. That those people did not care about his welfare, his health, um, or well-being, none of that. And uh, the next morning, he was cold. Now, there's something that's stupid and ignorant, and they do it at Petersburg, just like they do it at many jails, and they do it apparently at retirement homes, according to people I've heard. Nobody dies in prison. Nobody dies in prison. They will do CPR on a dead body until they get a mile down the road. Okay, and then, then say that's when they passed, but nobody dies in prison because it's a lawsuit. Okay, he was cold, he was gone. They had a sheet over his face, wheeling him out. And the counselor woman came outside and said, He didn't die here, he didn't die here. It was just so obvious, and it made me so freaking mad. I'm like, It's a human, you know. First off, y'all didn't help the man, second off, you're so focused on covering it up. Um, the BOP, like, okay, Petersburg, it's, it's a union. The guards are, are a brother and sister union that cover for each other. And, yeah, they, they are terrible. And they did not do anything to help this man. He told me they're not going to do anything to help me, and I'm going to die. And I said, no, you're not, man. And sure enough, he did. And there are more stories that I can tell you like this that I can have verified through my buddy Pinto through my buddy KC, uh, through more of my, JB, shoot, he's in Rono. I've got more friends than I can count that can tell you these stories of people that asked the staff for help. Please help me. I need to go to the hospital. Ah, we'll see how you're feeling tomorrow. Then you, like, literally, you have to just, like, fall out over and over and over again. Even then, it ain't guaranteed. Um, you know, it, it's very... They, they don't like doing it. First off, they're lazy. Second off, it costs money. So they do not care about your life when you are in this prison. And that's a scary thought. It's a scary fact. And, you know, I did, did more than anything, I, I it sucked to see my buddy die because I remember sitting and BSing with him. Everybody looked at me as like the little brother, a little nephew, because I was young as could be. Closest person to me in age when I got to that prison in maintenance was probably 40 years old. Average person was 42, about 80, working on that maintenance crew. And I loved hearing stories. You know, I get these crazy people tell me some crazy stories. And, you know, Popcorn told me a good many. And um, it really sucks. It sucks so bad because I feel like it could have been avoided. I feel like there are so many more things that could have been done. And I'm going to talk about this. And I'm going to talk about this often. Um, and as this gets bigger, I'm going to piss a lot of people off. And you know what? I, I really don't care. I hope to piss people off because when people get pissed off, you know, and you make enough noise, when the wheel squeaks loud enough, you change the thing. And uh, it really sucks because, you know, there's another guy, Mikey, we called him Catman. Everybody thought he was a chomo. He wasn't a chomo. He was albino. He, look, he looked funky, okay? But he ran. He had a crack house. He was a crackhead. He had, he ran a crack house. He got ten years for running a crack house. And Mikey, Mikey ended up getting um, getting another five years for sending George Bush a letter written to George Bush with coffee creamer in the envelope. <sighs> he would have been out of prison, but he he died. He also asked him, "Please take me out of here." He was jaundiced. You know, he's albino, but I mean, he turned from white to yellow. His eyes and everything else. Now, um. Funny dude, though. Oh, my Lord. Called him Catman because he'd make a noise like cat, and you'd think cat was somewhere around. But we had cats at the low. 
till they got this new woman who worked there and she had them all scooped up and put in a trash can and taken off. I didn't like that. Um, just it just to put them in a trash can, something like that didn't seem right to me neither. But this place, and it's not just Petersburg, it's a bunch of other prisons too. I've got a cousin who has a husband who's married into the family. Um, he's a douchebag, complete douchebag. Okay, I do not like him. My good cousin, who I do like, who uh, owns a couple bars, his son plays pool overseas. If you look up Shane Wolford, Wolf and then O-R-D, Shane plays overseas, and he's one of the best pool players in the world. But um, but anyway, whenever I found out that Corey, his dad, had had a heart attack the other day, uh, you know, I, I told his mom and I told him, I said, well, it, you're you're one of my favorites. I hate that happened to you. I wish it had happened to Mike. I, I told him that. You know, it might not be right. I don't really give a, a care about it, but that's what I said. And, uh, you know, he worked in the prison. And he told a story one Christmas when I was on bond. He knew I was going to prison. We were standing outside. And he told a story about this guy, and he was making fun of how he talked. He said, Boss, I'm telling you, I had meningitis. And he said he was hungover, so he told the guy, just shut up. I'm not in the mood to hear your stuff. And uh, the story ended, you know. Turns out, he had meningitis. He died. How about that? And I thought, you prick. You're sitting here telling this story like he isn't a human. It was this guy who's married into the family talking to me before when I was on bond getting ready to go to prison. You know, um, yeah, yeah. He, he's a douchebag. Um but it was a good representation of how a lot of the guards there treat people. They do not treat inmates like their life matters as much as people who, you know, haven't found themselves in the situation of uh, being in trouble with the law. And, you know, they tell them God doesn't love them any more than a, he loves any one of them inmates, except for the chomos. God, you know, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, God agrees with me on that, that, you know, that they suck. Um, but, you know, everybody else besides the chomos, uh, you know, I think we can agree that, you know, you're not special. They think they're special. Um, and it's, it's wrong. And it really, really irks me, and it really, really upsets me. And there's a lot more people that's going to pass. Because they're going to ask for help, they're not going to give them help, and they're going to have to sit there. And Petersburg Low did not have, uh, did not have uh, air conditioning, and it was in the summer too when he passed. Okay, hot days. It gets so hot in the day that when it'd be 60, 70 at night, the building would still be 85, 90 on the inside till after 11, 12 o'clock at night, because it would retain the heat. Um, them old people, they they couldn't handle it. And they don't care. Not one single bit. Old people like that should not be in a prison without air conditioning. Okay? It sucked. I hated it. Me being in it. That's why I stayed in the TV room. TV room did have air conditioning. Um, but a lot of people don't ever go in the TV room. Ever. Too stubborn. Do just whatever. Don't watch TV. Whatever. Don't go in the TV room. Um, but it was a hot day. It was also a hot day when Mikey passed away. And uh, I'd, I'd say the heat had something to do with it for both of them being in that unbearable living situation. So, yeah, it's something I feel pretty strongly about. So, anyway, I know this was some depressing stuff, but it needs to be talked about, and I'm going to talk about it. Um, if you like the video, press the like button. If not, it's 19 minutes and 5 seconds of your life in which you'll never get back. Other night on the live, uh, Vegas prison stories, you know Rick. He's done more for other channels than he's done for his own self, helping people get subscribers, everything else, and I met some good people through him. It's wild. I'm, he, he's from Vegas, and I met somebody from West Virginia, Weavy, through him. Now, there was somebody that lied on him, and I didn't really take too kindly to that. No. So I kind of said some stuff uh, on that line, basically let it be known, you know, <laughs> you know, you're, you you're not right for what you did lying on Rick. And, you know, 
person may, maybe fancies himself a little bit of a fight or something like that. I said, I'll come in 160 pounds and, you know, we make an event of it, you know. I'll come in 160 pounds, you know. If we're just if we're just talking, you know, whatever rules, you know, if we're just talking stand up, can't take each other down, you know. I promise, no head shots, only body shots. You, you get me in the head, um, but um, but I'll only throw, you know. Um, I won't throw any strikes to the head, and you know we can do this. Like Scott Sigman, my uh, friend. It's got the boxing event. I'm gonna start another channel up for him in November. Um, shoot, he'll, he, I'm pretty sure I, I'm, I'm about positive I could get him to make it an event, and hey, make it a thing. But um, and coming in at 160, that's, that's pretty light. So you know, um, you might want to think about it, because I talked a whole lot of trash that was deserving, because you know what, Rick's a good guy, and he didn't deserve that. So um. You know, I'm not going to sit by and just let him eat a big old pile of shit and just stand by and watch it. I can't do that. So, um, I spoke quite a bit. It was on Weavy's last night, I believe. I talked about it there at the very, very end again. But anyway, Canadian Jail uh, War Stories. Um, I'm going to be talking with him today. We're going to do a little something. But man, I hope that guy takes me up on it. I would love that. Oh my lord. I mean, whatever the rules may be, um, you know, there, there's right and there's wrong, you know, and, and they put him out there, made him look like he is a liar or everything else. And everybody else knows it, who knows him because he was watching it and there was a live that he was watching where he was watching and he said, no, he's not going to. And then he did it and he says, I can't believe. And then he tried to leave a comment, tried to leave a little money. So then the comment would get seen. Um, he was blocked, blocked, so he couldn't speak. Also, this person could keep their little, uh, status among their little circle they have, you know. Um, it's a shame, it's a shame, because Rick's a good guy, and he didn't deserve that, and it pissed me off something awful. So, if you, uh, think you can whoop a little 160-pound white guy, um, I would love to give you the opportunity to, um, you know, look at me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not tough, you know, I'm, I'm just a little, little white guy, you know, um, person done a little bit of training. So, you know, it's not quite as bad as other people, but it's, it's given up quite a bit of weight. So, you know, uh, get your nuts back because I'm going to drag mine all up and down your chin over this because you were dead wrong. Um, probably won't even see this, but after I say it a couple times, you know, I'm not gonna say it on every video. You're not gonna hear me say it on this channel again. Okay, so don't worry. But it needed to be said because Rick has done more to help more people and to look cool among your little buddies, you know, and to not look like a fool. You, you called him a liar in front of everybody. So, you know, that, that wasn't right to do. So screw you for that. You know you were wrong. And uh, if you don't like what I'm saying, you can do something. Don't say you're going to get one of them, you know, because then what if you do, okay? Then you end up locked up again, and you're not going to have one of them there. You're going to have to learn how to fight sometime. So, you know, um, be good if, you know, take me up on this. So that's it.